if one man's sin, we're talking about Adam, put crowds of people at the dead end of this of separation from God, just think what God's gift poured through one man, Jesus Christ, will do. There's no, there's no comparison between that death-filling sin and this generous, life-giving gift. The verdict on that one sin was the death sentence. The verdict on the many sins that followed was this wonderful life sentence. Amen. If death got the upper hand through one man's wrongdoings, Adam, can you imagine the breathtaking recovery life makes, sovereign life in those who grasp with both hands this wildly extravagant life gift, this grand setting everything right, that that one man, Jesus Christ, provides. So here it is in a nutshell. Just as one person did it wrong and got us all in this trouble with sin and death, another person did it right and got us out of it. But more than just getting us out of trouble, he got us into life. One man said no to God and put many people in the wrong, but one man Jesus said yes to God and put many in the right. All that law passing against sin did was produce more lawbreakers, but sin didn't and doesn't have a chance in competition with the aggressive forgiveness we call grace. When it's sin versus grace, grace wins hands down. All sin can do is threaten us with death, and that's the end of it. Grace, because God is putting everything together again through the Messiah, invites us into life, a life that goes on and on and on, world without end. Amen. So I hope we see from this demonstration that I did one thing to get saved, and that's believe on Jesus Christ. And once I am here, my actions will not get me out of here. Amen. My actions didn't get me here, and my actions will not get me out. Now, what we want to do here, we, we talk about this almost every week. Sin will destroy you. It will ruin your life. So we hope that you grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, knowing who you are now, that you've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, so walk in Him. He's not going to lead us down a destructive path. He loves us. He's not going to lead us into sin. He loves us. So we hope that your eyes can be open and we will see our Lord Jesus as He's leading us into life and into life and into life. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. Yeah. Give me a just just a second, you guys. Oh. What a good word, Debbie. Thank you so much. Wow. The gospel. <laughs> it's all about Jesus, right? Jesus, 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 Jesus. Whatever you're going through, man, Jesus is the answer. The enemy will try to tempt you to, to get introspective or find the answer in your brain and things like that, but I want to tell you the answer is in Jesus. Amen? And it's, it's always been about Jesus. Always. From the very beginning. And I'm super excited uh, about what I'm going to talk about the next few weeks. And it's really just called, It, it Was Jesus From The Beginning. Uh, and I told God that I'm not into series, sermon series. So then in the last six weeks, He's given me two series. <laughs> One on New Covenant giving and now uh, Jesus from the beginning. Uh, and what I want to do first is I just want to show you what I mean or what Debbie means or Dave means or Dale or whoever is sharing means when we say the word religion. Now, this is necessary because I want to avoid any chance of confusion. You know, when I talk to my mother, for instance, she lives in Harrodsburg, Kentucky. And when I talk about uh, religious Pharisees or how 
uh, Jesus wants to deliver us from religion, she is very confused because she knows religion to be a good thing. And, and she knows religious people to be good people. And how many of you know that's her understanding of the word religious? So she doesn't get it when I'm like, God is not interested in you just being religious. He wants you to have a relationship with Jesus. Jesus wants you to deliver you from the bondages of religion and have you step into His glorious grace in the new covenant. She doesn't understand. So I had to explain to her what I meant. So for you guys that come every week, if you don't know what I mean when I say religion versus grace, I want to make that real clear. And for the people that watch online, because we have a surprising amount of people that watch us online that can't come. So this is, this is why the lights are a little bit darker and I kept the, the slide up here. So I want you guys to see... Religion is a noun. It means a return to bondage. The word religion is traced to the Latin re, which means again, and ligare, which means to bind. In other words, to return to bondage. So when I talk about religion, that's what I mean. I mean the yoke of bondage that Paul referred to in Galatians 5.1. When he came and he preached the glorious freedom of the gospel of the grace of Christ. That Jesus did it all. That yeah, we had a death sentence given to us from Adam. But man, Jesus more than undid that death sentence. And he brings the free gift of salvation. Not by works, just as a gift. He earned it on the cross. He would come and preach that like Debbie just did. And then people would come back in and put people back into religion. They would say, yeah, that's true. Jesus came. He hung on the cross. He died for your sins. And you just got saved by believing on Him. But if you would like to stay saved, you need to go back to religion. In other words, you need to start following these however many things to stay good with God. You better not get a tattoo. You're going straight to hell, boy. Oh my goodness, smoking cigarettes? You might as well just hand yourself over to the devil. Religious bondage. Nowhere in the Bible. And so what we're called to do as Christians is read for ourselves. If you read for yourself, you'll get set free. <laughs> and, and, uh, and I'm not here to preach against religion. I'm here to preach pro-gospel. And so is Dave and so is Debbie. Amen? The gospel... It defends itself. We're not going to get bound up in preaching against stuff and getting angry and bitter. Amen? We're going to be thankful and joyful for the true gospel. So what I want to, just so you can see kind of, if you can examine your own church life or your church walk to this point in your life, I want you to see it's possible maybe you were in religion thinking it's what God wanted. Simple things, a few simple things here. Religion demands grace supplies. So if you felt like in your Christian walk, the demand to perform was on you, that was religion. It wasn't grace. It wasn't you walking in the new covenant and all the promises that Jesus has provided. You see, grace is all about Jesus supplies everything. The Father supplies, supplies, supplies. He carries the burden. He does the work. That's the gospel. If you feel like the demand is being put on you to perform or to maintain your salvation, or you're going to, you're paying for surgeries to get your tattoos covered up because you think you're going to hell, you think I'm crazy? People have done that because they thought they were going to hell because of a tattoo. Can can we get a break? I'm tired just thinking about that. And so's God. <laughs> Let's preach the true gospel, guys. Amen? Tattoos do not send you to hell. None of your works. It's if you rejected Jesus. Do you want to know the unpardonable sin? <gasps> I remember growing up. Oh man, I was always wondering if what I had just done was the unpardonable sin. Can anybody relate? You don't have to raise your hand where you can. I literally would be like, oh man, I wonder if that's it. <laughs> With no answer, right? That's an open-ended question. And then a few months pass and you do something else and you're like, oh, that had to be it. <laughs> it's just rejecting Jesus. That's it. If you really want to say no to a covenant... 
and a gospel that says, I have finished it all. I have earned innocence, blamelessness, righteousness for you. And I extend it to you as a gift for free. I want to lead you with my Holy Spirit who will lead you away from the things that are keeping you bound. Who will lead you out of the land of the giants of your bondages. He will lead you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'm always with you. I love you unconditionally. If you, if you want to say no to that, that's your prerogative. The problem is we haven't been preaching the new covenant and the grace of God in all of its majesty. So people reject it. You know, most people who've rejected God have re rejected the God that was presented them, who was an idol. Wasn't God. A God that's always mad. A God that's never satisfied. This is not God. Amen? The Bible says in Isaiah 54 that He will never be wroth with us again, nor remove His covenant of peace. What is this covenant of peace? It's the new covenant that we live under right now. He's never going to remove it. And He's not mad anymore. He's not mad at all. He's not even in a bad mood. <laughs> That's good news, right? Religion, God will love me if I change. I'm so despicable and sinful. If I can just clean up every single spot of dirt in my life, then maybe He'll love me. No, 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 no. The gospel is not a message where if you change, God will love you. The gospel is a message where God's love changes you. Big difference. God loves you where you're at. If you're in something that's killing you, He wants you out of that. When I say God loves you where you're at, I don't mean God wants you to stay in, in the bondages of sin and things that are destroying your life and your family's lives. I don't mean that. I mean just as you are. Without you changing a thing, He loves you unconditionally. And as you receive that love despite your sin, it will change you. That's how this works. Religion, you carry the burden. I've been there. Grace, Jesus carried the burden. Can I get an amen? Thank you, Jesus. God chooses grace. What do you choose? So we have a choice. We can keep trying to do it on our own and wearing ourselves out. <laughs> we can do that. We can keep going and getting procedures to cover up our tattoos. We can keep buying into religion and believing the lies of religion if we want. But you won't experience any joy, any freedom. Because you're trying to carry a burden you're not strong enough to carry. Only Jesus carries that burden for you. Amen? And His heart is to lift that burden off of you. You know, I've used this example before, but if my little 21-month-old son, Harmon, was wearing one of those Under Armour 20-pound weight vests, okay? Have you guys seen those at Walmart? You can use them. You can use them for jump training, so you weigh an extra 20 pounds, or you can do pull-ups with that 20-pound weight vest on. For me, I mean, I can only get like 40 or 50 one-arm pull-ups with that thing on. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm just joking. But if someone else put that on him, if someone else put that burden on him, and here I walk into the room and there's my 21-month-old son trying to carry around a 20-pound weight vest, I immediately see a few things. I know he's not designed to carry that much burden. The second thing I think is I want to lift that burden off of him as his loving father. And so what do I do? I race to him. And I lift that thing off of him so that he can walk again. So he can get up. He might even just be laying on the ground. Have you ever felt like that? Can't get up. And I see him and his legs flailing and I come over there. And I take that thing off of him. And I lift him up. And I kiss him. And I say, son, I've lifted that burden for you. Walk burden free from now on. Okay, that's what God wants to do for every one of you. Amen. If you'll turn over to... Uh, CJ, you can go to the next thing. Um, turn to uh, Romans 15.4. And here at Kingdom Culture, if this is your first time, I don't preach for a really long time, so stop worrying now. <laughs> and 
and it's also super free, so if you need to use the bathroom or if you want to go get a bite or grab another coffee, that's fine. It won't bother us. So Romans 15.4, what I want to do in this, in this uh, series is kind of start to unpack Jesus in the Old Testament for you. Okay? He, the Old Testament, Jesus is revealed all throughout the Old Testament. So Romans 15.4, it says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. Now, turn to John 5.39. And then we'll get into this. These are just a couple foundational things. So the Old Testament is there for us, not necessarily to form doctrine from, but to learn from and to see Jesus in. Oh, I'm having a hard time turning to John. All right. 539. Okay, this is Jesus. You see, the, a lot of people these days and the Pharisees of Jesus' time, they thought that the life of God was found in the Scriptures. In the Scriptures themselves. So, so they would quote the Scriptures and you know, live by the Scriptures and, and think that they were going to produce the life of God. Jesus says in John 5.39, He says, Search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. So they thought they were gaining eternal life by following the law. So Jesus says, you think you found eternal life in the Scriptures, but they are they which testify of Me. And you will not come to Me that you might have life. So we see people these days and the Pharisees of, of old, who they know the Scriptures, man, backwards and forwards. They'll hammer you over the head with the Scriptures, lovelessly hammer you over the head. Or hammer uh, certain sins, especially, over the head with the Scripture, right? But the Scriptures, eternal life is not found in the Scriptures. Those Scriptures that they speak of, they testify of Christ. He is what those Scriptures are meant to reveal. So these Pharisees, for instance, and Jews today, they live by the Torah, Okay, that's the, also called the Pentateuch. It's the first five books of the Bible. Alright? I want to show you what the word Torah, which is what these Pharisees lived by, and what the Jews live by today, what it means in Hebrew. And show you that it's all about Jesus. Even the law. Torah. First five books of the Bible. It comes from four Hebrew letters. The word He, which means what is revealed from. Anytime that letter is at the end of a Hebrew word, it means what is revealed from. Tav, or uh, Resh, which means the man. Vav, which means nail. And Tav, which means the cross. So Torah literally means what is revealed from the man on the cross who was nailed to the cross. Literally. That's what Torah means. How could we live by the Torah and not see that the Torah itself means what is revealed from the man who was nailed to the cross? That's Jesus. God was prophesying Jesus from the very beginning. You see, in the Law and the Prophets, types and shadows were revealed of the substance of Christ to come. The real thing was going to come, but He had to be prophesied first. If we look in Genesis, I believe it's chapter 3, before God sends Adam and Eve out of the garden, He clothes them with animal skins. What I want you to see is this is God prophesying a sacrifice, a covering sacrifice for sin. They had just sinned. If God covered them with animal skins, that means He sacrificed animals. That means He shed blood and then covered them. This was speaking forth the sacrifice of Jesus Christ from the very beginning. If you can go to the, to the next slide, I just want to show you guys a couple words that we've always heard in church and what they mean in the original language and show you that it's all about Jesus. All 
always, no matter what, it's all about Jesus, even the Old Covenant and the prophets. So we see here uh, in Revelation 1.8 and 22.13, uh, we won't turn there because I don't want to go super long. Jesus is actually refers to Himself as the Alpha and the Omega. How many of you have heard that before? I'm the beginning and the end. Okay, in Hebrew, He's the Aleph and the Tav. Okay, those are the first and last letters of the Hebrew alphabet. What does Aleph mean? First of all, it has a, every Hebrew letter has a picture. Okay, for the Aleph, it's an ox, which speaks of a sacrifice. It means leader and strength. Tav means covenant. Jesus is the sacrifice, the leader, and the strength of the new covenant. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Praise God. There's one more slide here, and I want to talk about the word Sabbath. Okay? Now, even nowadays, only Sunday's the Sabbath. Right? I mean, I, it was so confusing when I was growing up because everybody would say you're not supposed to work on the Sabbath. But there I would be mowing and raking leaves every Sunday. <laughs> I'm sitting here like, man, the preacher just said we're not supposed to work. Man, there's a game on. Why am, I, why am I out here raking leaves? This is messed up. I thought I'm not supposed to work. Is this the unpardonable sin? Am I going to hell? Man, this, I got another hour of mowing. <laughs> it's very confusing, right? I want to show you that we are in a 24-7, never-ending Sabbath right now because Jesus is the Sabbath. He is the Sabbath rest. The word Sabbath is it's comprised of three Hebrew letters. When you put Shin and Bet together in a word, it means repent and return to. Then we have Tav, which we learned earlier means cross. Sabbath literally means repent and return to the cross <laughs> for rest. Are you worn out from this Christian thing? Is it too much? Do you have no rest? Repent. That means change your mind and change your direction. It does not mean come up here and cry on the altar. If you want to cry, praise God, come do it. But that's not what repent means. Repent means a change of mind. It's the Greek word metanoia. And a change of direction. See, what you're doing is you're not looking to the cross for your righteousness. You're not looking to the cross for rest. You're trying to find rest in your own strength. You're trying to earn or perform and produce your own righteousness without looking to the cross. There is no rest outside of looking to the cross. There's none. You'll eventually grow weary. But, remember, keep the Sabbath holy and remember it. I do want to turn to this scripture really quick in Exodus 20 verse 8. And we'll sum up. I'm just so excited by this. You know, Jesus, the Bible is a living book. It's so amazing. To me, it was just always so boring. It's really not boring at all. Especially when you begin to see that even the Old Testament is, is about Jesus. In Exodus 20 verse 8. It says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So remembering the Sabbath day is for you to remember. It's all already been done on the cross. Everything you try to do to earn things from God, to perform well enough for Him, remember the Sabbath. In other words, repent from that way of thinking. Change your direction. Stop thinking you've got to do it. And turn over here into the direction of the cross and you will find your Sabbath rest. Amen. Jesus said, Come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden. If you are weary and heavy laden, you are not looking to the cross. You're looking to your own law following and, and earning and good works like she was talking about with this girl that was earning all of Dave's third place 5K medals that Dave let her use. No, I'm just kidding. First place. I'm just joking. They were first place. I'm just joking. I always love, he's my father-in-law, so I love to give him a hard time. We like to talk a little bit of trash. But 
It's not about those good works that she was doing. It was when she received the work of Jesus Christ. Amen? And then she found rest. And it's the same with us. So, the Torah means what is revealed from the man who hung, who was nailed to the cross. Literally, that's what the law means. Sabbath means turn from looking to yourself for rest and look unto the cross for rest. And Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the Aleph and the Tuv. I know this Hebrew stuff is goofy, but this is powerful stuff to know. He is the sacrifice, the strength, and the leader of the new covenant. Praise God. The old covenant was, was dependent on the obedience of the Israelites and they could never obey, right? The new covenant was signed in blood between God and God. So we can trust in the new covenant, amen? Praise God. I want to bring Nate up here. If you can come and come up here and noodle around on the guitar. And Dave, I want to bring you up to close. But I just want to encourage you guys. Keep your eyes on the cross. That's where you'll find rest. And if, you, if, you, if you're reading your Bible in the Old Testament, ask God to begin to show you Jesus as you read. And you'll begin to see passages where you're like, I think that's talking about Jesus. And the Holy Spirit will begin to teach you and the Bible will actually start to blow your mind and be enjoyable to read rather than just a burden. Amen? Praise God. Thank you guys. Amen. That's awesome. Words have meaning. I was speaking to somebody earlier uh, that has spent Don't over 40 years of their life in jail. And I spoke to another person that's here okay. that has spent that's over clean. 40 years of their life that's clean. caring for someone that, that they loved you deeply, but it was uh, an invalid that stayed an invalid all the way until you, they passed. The tumor is right here if you want to use the tumor. As, as Just I hold that button down, that's why she revealed what can do. Jesus has done and lifted the burdens that we say about freedom. Um, I just think of those two extreme examples of, of people that just needed burden lifted and to be free. And that's, uh, that, that's what we all need, praise God. And while their cases might be extreme, we just learned today that um, there, is, there is freedom in giving it over to Jesus and not trying to perform this thing on our own. So with, with heads bowed and, and eyes closed, this may have been the first time you heard about Jesus in this way. And well-meaning people may have told you about a God that they misrepresented and didn't even know they were misrepresented. And you may have just heard for the first time the, the true gospel. I know what happened in my life. I was saved for 30-some years, but I didn't hear the true gospel until seven or eight years ago, praise God. So if that's, if that's the case with you, and you want to receive Jesus here this morning, and you just heard the gospel for the first time, just lift up your hand and someone will come and pray with you. If you want to just receive Jesus today, amen. Praise God. Just have to trust that we're all believers here. And thank you, Lord, for that. Amen. If you have other things that you uh, that are just burdening you right now, and you've heard, you've heard about this burden-lifting power of Jesus and the gospel, and you want a prayer today just for a burden you've been lugging around like that 20-pound backpack on our uh, precious grandson and Jake's son. Uh, if, that's, if that's a burden that you're carrying around today, just lift up your hand and someone will come pray with you and just help uh, help you realize and help you become free of that burden. Is there anyone here today that just needs, needs that burden lifted? Amen. Praise God. If there is, after, uh, after service, Please seek out one of us. If something's stirring in your heart and you've heard the gospel in a way that you've never heard it before and you're just about to burst and you just want somebody to pray with you about anything, either lift up your hand now or just uh, come to one of us afterwards because we just would love the opportunity of, of agreeing with God with you about the burden that you're sharing. Amen. Let's pray together today. Father, uh, in a mighty way, you've been revealed. And I praise you for what uh, what you've done and how you've worked in Jake's life to where he could share that, not through his own goodness, but through your greatness, Father. And I just praise you for that. And Father, I just give you glory today. Lord, we just glorify you. 
Praise your name, Father. You are our strength. You are our victor. You are our rest and you are our peace. We just love you, Lord. We praise your name. Glory to you, God. Glory to you, Father. Oh, precious Lord, thank you for caring so much. Thank you for revealing yourself to us in a way that, Lord, our, our lives are changed forever. Father, thank you for loving us so much that you gave it all and that we know that our sins are forgiven. Praise God that sin is not an issue. And while you don't want us to live in a sinful life because it's hurtful, they have been paid for and dealt with. Praise you, Lord, for that. We praise you, Father. Thank you for Jesus, Lord. Thank you for Jesus. Father, just as we, uh, as we just formally break up uh, our service today, Lord, even as we just linger around, we just want to give you the glory for all that you've done. Thank you for the precious blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Thanks for coming. Invite somebody next week. Uh, if you have anything that comes up this week, anybody has a need, you identify somebody that uh, needs Jesus or just needs something in the physical realm, make sure to let us know. Every week we go by, we're providing gifts and we're providing uh, food, and we just want to keep doing that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thanks for coming. Thank you for those who make breakfast. Thank you guys. Yes, give a hand for the people that cut.